In late January of this year, Capcom released a remake to probably one of the most popular titles of the Resident Evil series, Resident Evil 2. A discussion of a remake occurred shortly after the release of the remake of the first game back in 2002 for the GameCube, but efforts were focused on Resident Evil 4 which would revitalise the series but also shifted it into a more action orientated gameplay and moved away from its roots of puzzles and survival horror. As the series continued it became clear fans wanted a return to what they loved about the franchise, and Capcom brought it back to its roots with Resident Evil 7, probably the most terrifying game in the series. Fans still wanted a remake of their favourite game in the franchise, and Capcom thankfully listened to the fans and announced in 2015 that it was in development, but nothing was really heard on its progress till three years later. Once the game hit store shelves in 2019 it was praised by critics and the fans alike. Back in the late 90s when the original game came out, I didn't own a PlayStation. I was still rocking my Sega Saturn and enjoying the import titles such as X-Men vs Street Fighter and Radiant Silvergun, but I adored the first game and played it around my friends and got a chance to play it on my Saturn, so I was a little jealous I couldn't play this new sequel on my console of choice, and I had to make do with the clunky and disappointing Deep Fear, which was Sega's attempts at a Resident Evil clone but I got my chance to play the sequel when I upgraded to the Dreamcast and later the GameCube with its re-release on that console due to the exclusive release of Resident Evil the Remake and Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 2 expanded the story and focused on the shady business practices of Umbrella and how the T-Virus has spread and destroyed Raccoon City and turned everyone into zombies. It follows the structure of the original game, swapping the mansion for the police station, unlike the first game you go beneath the station and discover Umbrella's laboratory, and along the way you encounter new monsters and new characters to expand the world of Resident Evil. Fans obviously loved the new setting of it being in a city, and the action was amped up and it struck a chord with the fans, and over the years it still remains a firm favourite, so a remake was definitely needed, as a 2002 remake of the original was such a great achievement, and for me personally it's my favourite game of the franchise. It improved upon everything and gave us a fantastic story. I had no desire to return to the original PlayStation and Saturn game. If I had the urge to play the original of the franchise, it had to be the remake. So is this remake of Resident Evil 2 worth the wait, and does it live up to expectations? For the most part, yes. The gameplay is solid, the graphics are very impressive, with the cutscenes being extremely well animated and voiced. Seeing those classic areas of the original being reimagined looks stunning. It brings on a sense of nostalgia, but also seems fresh. The game gives you a choice between playing as Leon or Claire, very much like the original. And their stories are different, but the puzzles you have to solve, for the most part, are the same. Some rooms you can't access with Claire, as that's part of Leon's story for example. With the game being a survival horror game, it certainly has its fair share of jump scares, which is often a cheap ploy to frighten you, but it does tend to work most of the time. When you encounter Mr X in both stories of Leon and Claire, he stomps around chasing you and there is menacing music to accompany these moments, which makes it very intense. Mr X is certainly more of a nuisance for Leon's story, and I think his campaign is a bit tougher to play, as it appears you have less ammunition to play with and you have more of the infected to battle against. With this new version, zombies will tend to follow you through doors, so just running past them and running through another door doesn't necessarily mean you are safe. There was talk of Capcom retaining the original fixed camera angles for this release, but they made a decision early on to keep it in the style of Resident Evil 4, with the camera behind you and giving you more freedom to move around. I still have a nostalgic love for the original style of the gameplay, but in keeping with Resident Evil 4, 5 and 6 and of course the Revelation games, it makes sense. I've played through both stories of Leon and Claire and gone through story B with Leon. Once you complete the game with either character you get the option to play the story from a different perspective and the number of the puzzles are changed and the items you pick up such as keys have changed location. With story B this is how you get the proper ending to the game, so there is definitely reasons to go back to it once you complete it for the first time and for a game you can essentially complete in under 4 hours or less, I've gone back to it a lot since it came out, so it's highly addictive and works just as well as the classic games in the franchise. There is this desire to go back to it and complete it in a faster time, and see if you can save it less throughout your run through, to see what you can unlock in terms of new weapons. It's the old days of getting a high score in the arcades, I'm rarely fussed about high scores, but with this game and the others in the franchise getting a faster completion time is always high on my agenda. Now I have a few issues with the game, these are mostly nitpicks. None of these problems I have with it really affect the overall quality of it in any way, just a few things I felt they could have improved upon. 
Firstly, there isn't much interaction between Leon and Claire. This was evident in the original game, but I think this is where they could have improved it to help create more continuity between their storylines. There are many moments for them to cross paths, but Capcom have decided to stick to their guns and limit their interaction. I think this would have helped strengthen their friendship and their investigation into what happened to Raccoon City. The zombies you encounter throughout the game, there appears to be only five or maybe six character models Capcom have produced, and they just swap their clothes around to provide some variety. I think they could have easily created more models, especially with the current state of technology today, so it appears a bit lazy on their behalf. There is little use of music, you get the little musical cue as you enter the police station that homage is the original, but throughout the majority of the game it's pretty much silent, as it's designed for the sound effects to play a part in scaring you and creating the atmosphere. There is of course music especially during a boss battle and when Mr X appears, but I think it was a missed opportunity for Capcom to reorchestrate those classic themes on a bigger scale. You can buy DLC for a couple of pounds to put the original music back into the game, which is a nice addition, but ultimately it's unfortunate they dialed back the music for this remake. The story itself feels a little streamlined. They have of course expanded key moments in the story, but also thinned out other areas. If you look back at the remake of the original game, the story was improved dramatically. In the case of the architect who designed the mansion and the treatment of his daughter added a sad moment to the story. All those key plot points in the game were expanded in the case of this one, I felt somewhat less informed, so to speak. I think it could have benefited more from the beginning of the game and seeing Raccoon City fall into chaos, and again more interaction between Leon and Claire and other survivors. You spend less time in the city, I think there could have been more at the beginning as you make your way to the police station. Those are key points I would have changed, but as I said the game is still a fantastic experience, but I just wanted a little more in those areas. Just recently Capcom released free DLC for the game, giving you three characters to play as. These are basically bonus missions. The playable characters are Robert Kendo, No Time to Mourn, Catherine Warren, Runaway and Ghost, The Forgotten Soldier. These are fun challenges but also pretty tough, with the soldier being the most difficult as he escapes from the lab as it falls apart. You get hardly any ammo and loads of monsters to battle. Catherine who escapes from the orphanage comes across some strange monsters, looking a bit like the pale alien from Alien Covenant. If you want to see me complete the story with Claire, you can find a link to the video below where it's available on my Let's Play channel. There is now talk of Capcom revisiting Resident Evil 3 for a remake. I'm pretty excited to see what they can do with it. Number 3 did get good reviews at the time, but I think it was overshadowed by Code Veronica on the Dreamcast, and it felt ultimately a little bit rushed as Sony wanted another game on their platform. Hopefully Capcom can give it a new lease of life and give its story a much needed update. If you haven't had a chance to play this game yet, then please do so, as it's a brilliant title that treats the original with respect and updates it for a modern audience. Of course, there's a few little bits here and there I would have changed, but ultimately it's still a solid game that is worth adding to your collection. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to see more retrospectives and commentaries. Also click on the bell to be notified of the latest reviews. If you want access to exclusive videos and to watch my content a few days before it's on YouTube, you can head on over to my Patreon. Thank you very much.